So every time I walk my dog, uh, I see this thing stuck to the side of telephone poles, you know, at intersections. You push the button and the little green dude turns on and all that. And I kept looking at it and it, you know, it's, it occurred to me that this thing's actually kind of a cool modeling exercise. You know, it's got multiple parts to it. There's that tricky bit at the top where the two cylinders kind of touch each other because uh, while we don't show it in the video, trust me, there's complications there when trying to use the rounded edge shader or even trying to use booleans, you can end up with a mess. So we just kind of straight model that. Uh, that's right at the start of the video. We do an inset and kind of scoot it up. There's other yeah, pieces here too, like the inset screws and the little round thing on top. And there's some neat stuff here, at least in my opinion. So this video runs through creating the high poly and I kind of talk over top of it. And I hope you can get some value out of it. So here we go, we're kicking off the street crossing button thing. So you'll see here at the very beginning, I do that thing I talked about with the you know, cylinder being inset to the cylinder and all that. It just seemed like the easiest way to model this. And you'll see when I turn on the sub D here in a little bit that it actually does work out with proper edge weighting. There's um. There's no booleans in this video. This is all just straight sub D with edge weighting. Uh, yeah, I figured it was about time I did something that wasn't uh, that didn't rely on booleans. Just you, just so I don't fall out of practice. You know what I mean? Uh, but you can see a number of things on this mesh though that are kind of interesting from a high poly perspective. There's the inset screws. There's that uh, that separating panel line that runs through the center of the shape or I guess about a third back from the, the front. There's that little round thing on top that kind of blends in. It's, yeah, there's some stuff here. So this is me just trying to clean up the, uh, uh, the front polygon because I wanted to get that. Uh, I wasn't liking the default tessellation, you know, the way it came out uh, after I merged it in. So I just go ahead and I just merge uh, this is something I'll do sometimes. I'll take it. A, you know, I'll take a bunch of polygons and merge them together uh, into one polygon, uh, and then go through and just use the poly split command to 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 explicitly define where I want quads and triangles to fall. Uh, it doesn't always. You know, it's not always the smartest thing, but it's uh, you know, most of the time it serves me well. So here we're going to build the holes for the little uh, screw heads. And this is using the perfect circle script, I think, or maybe it's the radial align. Yes, radial align in this case. So I just, you know, I do an inset, uh, then I radial align the inset, and then we hit it with a couple of bevels to push the hole in. But and it's really all you have to do to you know, maintain that kind of a shape. So I'm throwing a little edge weighting on it now because stuff's starting to get a little hokey when I hit sub D. And you can see on top here, now that I've hit sub D and waited, uh, you know, I, uh, this gets rendered a bunch of times, so don't worry if you missed it there, you'll you'll see it, believe me. But that, um, that top transition works out pretty good. And this is another technique where you want to insert something into a hole, so just copy the back of the hole and paste it into a new mesh item you know, extrude it and then do whatever you want to it safe safe in the knowledge that it's going to fit directly back into that hole again so this is obviously the uh, the silver push button Trying to see how that feels. Now I believe I have to scale this down a little bit because you want to get like you know, that that air gap around the outside. But just applying rounded edge shaders, looking at it. Some edge weighting down in the uh, screw holes. 
There we go. That's looking all right. Yeah, I wasn't liking the softness of that edge when I was rendering out the uh, you know, the rounded edge shader. It, it, it's a little much. So I tried to put some support loops in there thinking that might help lock in that sharpness, but that didn't work out. So I think we're just going to come back to that later. I actually recorded this a couple days ago, so I... Uh, uh, some of the stuff is catching me by surprise too, so you'll have to bear with me. So the panel line actually gets modeled in. We're not doing um, you know, any kind of a... Like you can do panel lines in multiple ways. We could do some sort of like a floater that's like, well, yeah, quite literally a floater ring that sits around there that looks like a panel line that would bake out correctly. But in this case, it just gets modeled in. So from here, it looks like we... Yeah, this is starting on the, on that, that piece on top that kind of blends into the, uh, at the back of the shape. Uh, now this will be using an interesting technique that I use uh, quite a bit actually. I will create a brush like this one that generally represents the shape that I want that lines up to the geo and all that. And then I will use use the 3D drill functionality of moto booleans. Yeah, I said there were no booleans, but this is not technically a boolean. Stay with me. So uh, what you do is you create the shape you want on top of the sub D mesh, uh, insert the mesh inside so it represents you know where it needs to be. Then you use the 3D drill functionality to imprint the shape on the mesh. Uh, you'll see here the geo, uh, uh, you get the edges cut into the mesh you're working on. It's, it's actually very handy. And here, I, here I was sort of deciding that it wasn't quite the right uh, ratio of back to front and Looking at it now, maybe that yeah, maybe that's a little small. I don't know, but anyway. And with the rounded edge shader, we could just leave this here, but it doesn't really work because I, I want to cut a hole in the top too, uh, you know, where that steel pole is being inserted with the screw thread. So this has to be a cohesive mesh. So we do the solid drill, and then we clean up a little bit. Yeah, but you can see that shape has been directly cut you know, into the mesh. And so I'm, I'm trying to clean up in such a way that doesn't disturb the uh, topology of the cylinder. Yeah, I want that to all be smoothed out still and even. So I'm adding edge loops, which will allow me to, to connect those verts contiguously. You know, in a nice clean manner. And that does leave a triangle there, but that doesn't really affect anything. Okay, now we, I believe, extrude this up, flatten it out. And that becomes the, uh, oh, I was trying to use the linear uh, align tool. Uh, there it goes. But I noticed this little splooge on the front that has to get cleaned up because the uh, linear align is not always you know, my best friend. So actually, I've got a hotkey set up. So when I have the scaling tool enabled, I can pop that key and it'll flatten to the axis that I'm pointing at. So, so a quick test to see how the transition looks. Seems basically okay. Now I think I want to. Yeah, I had a weird thing here. I was trying to iron out. There's some sort of a weighting issue here, and I believe it's because the the vertices had weighting. 
uh, that I had to clear that I wasn't, you know, that wasn't registering in my head for some reason. Uh, I don't think it's gone yet, but we'll see. Just, you know, more tidying up. Right, okay, so now we're going to add a bevel to the outside edge just to give it a little bit of flavor. And this back really doesn't, uh, I think I decided at this point, yeah, there it goes, that we don't need the back anymore because we're never going to look back there, so who cares? Okay, yeah, I must have fixed that vertex weight uh, earlier, uh, but the video sped up a little bit, so I guess we blew right past it. So now we're going to use the same technique that we used on the screw heads. Uh, I'm going to merge the uh, top poly together. I, I, I believe that's what's going to happen. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I was having trouble getting... Right, I'm trying to put the edge loops in that I can use. Now, ultimately, to do the inset and radial thing and then do the end. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and you can see there's a bunch of goofy splooge on that back wall. That gets cleaned up when I run the, uh, uh, the vert merge on the mesh, just Stuff happens. I probably hit bevel twice or something on it. Yeah, these are just the realities of working with meshes. I I believe we hit this. Yeah, we delete that edge because I thought it'd be cooler with the chamfer up there. All right. Now I think it's time to Wait before I get ahead of myself. Oh, I'm trying to center things up because I think it's time to build the screw heads. Oh. Okay. We're going to use symmetry. I. Oh no, sorry. We're building the uh, uh, the indent on the very back. You see it right by the pole? Yeah, they each have this kind of an indented piece, and that's what's going to get done here. So I just chop off a piece of geo, make it straight, cap it with a polygon, uh, insert enough edge loops, although I didn't do it correctly there. We have to fix that in a second. But you know, insert enough edge loops that things will still flow. And uh, that's all there is to that. I'll add a little edge weighting to that, those back polygons and things should work out just fine. Now the amusing thing is that even though symmetry worked correctly for me here, and it so rarely does, it ends up biting me because I leave it on and I don't realize it's on and some silly things happen uh, that I'm not sure what's going on like at the time when I'm using it, but then later on I realize, oh right, okay, symmetry was on. Uh, what you're seeing here is my my cheesy way of of doing screw threads. Uh, this is in no in no way a screw thread, but when it you know when it bakes out or when it renders, you, you see here the scaling tool is acting bizarrely. Uh, you know, I can't get it to go to the center of the selection. That's because symmetry is still on, and for some reason I am just just mentally not registering that. But I fix it, I think, by doing like a, an L. See, yeah, I thought closing the window would fix it. So anyway, I think I fix it by anchoring to that center vert down below and scaling with that. But this fake thread thing is basically just you do a bunch of loops, uh, grab every second one, scale them in. It's not actually a screw thread, but no one's going to look that closely on a prop like this. So as far as I'm concerned, that's good enough. That looks like a screw thread from a distance. Great. 
that's uh that's pragmatism <laughs> and getting stuff done so here so the screws are basically round well they are round but they have like a six-sided uh, inset in them or something you see here I still have symmetry on it I still have this weird other shape uh, appearing and I just I, I I'm just rolling with it because it's actually kind of funny because right now I want to yell at myself symmetry is on but but of course I can't uh, can't do that it almost feels like the border of the viewport needs to go go red or something or or I need to get less silly about how I you know, use moto I guess that might be the other option so I'm going to use the radial align tool here and I'm going to go into an uh, insided mode uh, and give it six sides you could do that by hand but you know, if you've got a tool and it's a hot key away you might as well use it So I'm, I'm throwing in some edge weights here so that the screw hole will hold its shape. Now we'll position the hole. Or, sorry, position the screw in the hole. Now reset the work plane. Now toss a quick mirror at it. Now it's on the other side. You, to give it a slight, um, you know, slight rotation so it's a little different from the other one, so it doesn't look like it was copy and pasted. Just a little. Yeah, and I see now this is not quite correct. So I think I just go ahead and yeah, just change the, change the triangulation on that. Now this back edge is, is uh, looking at the reference image. This, you know, uh, that's a little sharp. So I go ahead and I start softening that up. I think just deleting that or softening up those edges fixes it. But uh, I, I may get a little fancier here, and uh, we'll see. Yeah, and that outer edge is, uh, also has the same problem. It's a little sharp, so we're going to have to deal with that. Just turning this into an art director, I can immediately hear them complaining about that. All right. Screw holes, we ease those off first. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly rendering the mesh. Here's that gap I was talking about. I guess I decided to do it last. Just to give it, you know, it, uh, it gives the ambient occlusion, you know, a place to play when you bake that out, and, and and it just looks a little more realistic. Stuff is not you know exactly snug to other things, so uh, you, if you can add a little gap, you, you might as well go ahead. And actually, now that I think about it, I think yeah, I did change that that outer edge later on. So thanks for watching and thank you very much to all of my patrons on Patreon. You guys are the freaking best. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.